All right, in this video, we'll be talking about three very important reasons why you're always going to plead not guilty at the arraignment. My name is Jamal Kersey, and I'm the principal attorney at Kersey Law, which is a boutique criminal defense firm in San Diego, California. And in this video, like I said, we're talking about three very important reasons why you're always going to plead not guilty at the arraignment. And so number one is going to be the burden of proof. If you've been watching my content for a while, then you should absolutely know that it is the prosecutor, it is the DA that has the burden of proving a person's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt in a criminal case. And so at the arraignment, at that first hearing, the defense is not going to have any of the evidence that the DA believes points to their guilt. So there's no reason why a defense attorney would then try and convince their client to plead guilty when they haven't had the opportunity to see the evidence against them. So they haven't seen the police reports, witness statements, photographs, videos, evidence, none of that stuff. So so the defense attorney doesn't know at that point whether the DA is going to be able to meet their burden of proof. So until they've had an opportunity to go over everything, form a defense strategy and and carry that strategy out, then, you know, you, you, you just don't know whether the DA is going to be able to meet their burden of proof and not knowing that you would never have a client plead guilty at arraignment. The second issue is investigation. So we definitely want to have an opportunity to complete a full investigation based on the evidence in the case. Now, at Kersey Law, we get the jump on our defense investigation very early on. So very soon after a client decides to move forward, I'm having my investigator go out and get witness statements. You know, if we need to have photographs taken, video collected, whatever it is that we need, um, going out to local businesses to get surveillance video, if appropriate for the case, we try and get the jump on our investigation very early on. But in certain instances, it can be very helpful for us to have the evidence from the DA and be able to go through that information and then guide the, the balance of our investigation based on the information that the DA has provided to us through discovery. And so after we get those police reports, then we can have further uh, witnesses interviewed. We can go and get more photos, videos, whatever it is that we need. So at that first hearing, we won't have that opportunity again to see that evidence. So we need to wait until we get it so that we can complete our defense investigation. Most criminal cases just are not going to be complete without a thorough investigation by the defense. And the last issue is going to be context and mitigation. I talk about context and mitigation a lot in my videos because telling the client's story Putting the conduct in its proper context and, and providing mitigation information can be one of the most crucial elements to defending a case. Telling the why, why, why did this happen? How did we get here? And ideally being able to say how it's not going to happen again and being able to provide those assurances, that can be very important. The mitigation information can also be important. A strong work history, being a good father, having a solid education, awards, letter of support, all kinds of people who are willing to you know, step up to the plate and say how good of a person our client is, those can all be powerful information to submit to the DA and or the judge in order to get the best possible result for our client. So again, all these things that I mentioned, holding the prosecutor to their burden of proof, conducting the defense investigation, and collecting the context and mitigation information all need to be done before the decision can be made to decide to plead guilty or, you know, in some instances, if the case needs to go to trial. So those are three very important reasons why a not guilty plea is not entered at arraignment. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please show me some love and hit the like button. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications so you never miss a new video when it drops. As always, I want to thank you so much for watching and until next time. Peace.